feet. So I got some things I want y'all to do, because y'all know when I come out here, we got we to get, get hype, baby. We got to get hype. So I want y'all to stay standing. If you've, been, if you've been in my speeches, you know that I always do my little in the end we win, right? But I want to make it personal this time. When I say in the end, I want you to say I win, right? But I'm going to make it a little more sentimental. I want you to process what I'm saying, right? So wh while you're standing, I want you to close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes. Nobody going to hurt you. You're around conservatives, all right? <laughs> and I want you to think about a few things as I do the call and response. I'll say in the end, you'll say I win. But I want you to think about some things first. I want you to think about all them haters out there that have put you through a bunch of mess this year. I want you to think about them. I want you to think about all the trials and tribulations that you've been through. I want you to process it. I want you to think about all the failures, all the doubts, all the chaos, failed relationships, whatever it may be, I want you to process them. I want you to put them in your mind. And while you're thinking about it, I want you to declare this with your whole heart because I believe that the power of life and death is in your tongue. So I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to say in the end, you say I win. Y'all ready? In the end. Oh, man, y'all can do better than that. In the end. In the end. All right, take a seat. Take a seat. Y'all sound good. The reason that I do that is because I want you to internalize honestly that you're going to win in the end of this. No matter what the trial is, no matter what the situation is, no matter what you're going through, no matter how many friends have walked away from you, in the end of this, you're going to be victorious. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Who know, who, who have seen me speak before? All right, there's some, there's some, there's some uh, lazy ones out there. Y'all ain't, ain't on track yet. I'll get you up to speed. Now, I'm just playing. But I wasn't always like this, right? I had gold teeth in my mouth. I got young savage tattooed across my stomach. If anybody says something wrong to me, they'll catch these hands. How many of y'all know what that mean? Y'all know what that mean? All right. Some of y'all listen to rap music. But I wasn't like this. You know, I had a, a left-leaning ideology when I was in college. But what changed? There's two main factors that changed who I was and or, or how did I become who I am today. The first thing, which I think a lot of you guys may understand this, is that I got saved. The most important accomplishment in my life was when I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. And the second is that I had an open mind. I wasn't following the Joneses. Just because my homeboy says something, don't make it true. Just because everybody is going in one direction, don't mean you have to go. You need to have your own mind. Have an open mind, do your own research, come up with your own conclusions about the things that are going on. Because I had that open mind, I was able to receive information that led me to think differently. I was able to receive information that helped me realize that we do not live in a racist country. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie. Another thing that helped me open up my understanding because I was open-minded is that police officers as a profession is not a systemically racist organization. It's not true. Oh, it's finna, it's, finna get a little, it's finna get a little dicey here. And one thing that helped me realize, because I had an open mind, is that abortion is murder. I, 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 got some, I got some people standing up for that. It's murder. Another element that I was able to receive is that my accomplishments and the things that I'm able to accomplish or do in this world is based on my belief in God and also my personal effort. 
It has nothing to do with the white man, the black man. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with you putting in the best effort that you can. Being the best version of yourself. I want you guys to understand that you are not going to be like your neighbor, the person standing next to you. That's not your goal. Your goal is not to aspire to be like Brandon Tatum. Although I may be inspiring, I agree, okay? At least that's what my wife tells me every day, I'm inspiring. But your goal is to be the best version of yourself. You have talents, you have abilities, you have strengths, you have goals, and your goal in life is for you to accomplish that. And I'll tell you this, one thing that I learned, don't worry about what other people are saying about your, your faith and your beliefs and your dreams, your aspirations, what you stand on. Do not worry about these people who don't understand the vision that you have, that don't understand what you've been through, that don't understand what you see through your own education and your own research. Don't worry about these people. You be the best version of yourself. I want to go back to a point um, when it comes to policing. For you guys that may not know who I am, I'm a former police officer. I was a police officer. Thank you. I was a police officer in Tucson, Arizona for six and a half years. Uh, while I was a police officer, I, I trained officers how to become officers. I was a field training officer. I was on a SWAT team. Uh, I, I was a spokesperson. Believe it or not, I was a spokesperson for the police department, um, and I trained at the academy, so I did a lot of great things, and I saved a lot of people's lives. And I, I want people to understand that the majority of what police officers do in this country is they save people's lives. And saving lives is not diving over a cliff to grab somebody's leg or, 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 or grabbing somebody off a cliff, which is what I did. It's not just that. It's pouring into people every day with all you have. I will never forget, every day I would come home from policing, I would be empty because all I did was give everything I had to the people that, that were around me, the people that I served. I would speak life to them and tell them everything is gonna be okay. You can make it, you can change, put the drugs down, go to rehab, Officer Tatum believe in you. And I will go home completely empty. And that's what police officers do, majority of them do on a day-to-day -day basis. They empty themselves in service to other people whom they don't know and who probably don't care about them. People spit in my face and I still serve and I still believed in them. And I want people to understand that in, in, in some way that that's what police officers are here to do. They're here to serve. And I want you guys to be bold enough to stand on your faith and on your beliefs that we're not a racist nation. And we are all in this together. We may look different. Some of y'all may be taller, shorter, more beautiful, more charisma, you know. Whatever, whatever your thing is, whatever God has blessed you with, <laughs> that ain't up to me to judge you. But some of us may be different, smarter, some more ambitious, some people may be migrants here, legally, hopefully. Some people may come from different nations, different customs, it doesn't matter. When you are in this country and you have sworn to love and appreciate the United States of America, for the great country that it is, we're one people. We're one people. And my personal belief is that we're all God's children. And I want us to understand that because there's an effort by a lot of people in this country, most, most of them are in leftist leadership. They want to divide us. They want us to hate each other. They want us to look at each other and decide, are you a good person based on a, if you got vaccinated or not? If you're wearing a mask or not? If you are social justice conscious or not? Do you believe in white supremacy and racism or not? They want to divide us on those things. 
But one thing I can say to you is that we should be united on the front of believing that this is a great country, believing that we're all one under God, and believing that we live in the greatest country on planet Earth. So I want to I wanna open it up for Q&A at some point. I'm going to finish it with, with, this, with this statement here. Um, and it's very simple. It, there's no hurrah and all of this stuff. I just want, at the end of everything that I've said, I want you to believe in yourself. That's, that's the most important thing. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to look at your days that you wake up every morning and say, I have 24 hours in one day. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to build myself? How am I investing in my dream? I want you to understand that. I'm in a position right now that I live my dream. Why? Because I believed in myself. I, I had visualization of what I wanted to become and I didn't let anybody get in the way. When I was a police officer, I said, I'm going to write a book one day. It's going to be called Beating Black and Blue. That book, is, that book is finished. I used to fly on the, I used to fly on the airplane. I was single. Like some of y'all in here, raise your hand if you're a single man. All right, you better, y'all, you better not be out here dating and all that messing around. You better put a ring on it. Where my, where my couple at? It was, my, it was a couple I met yesterday. There they go, right there. He put a ring on it. That's what I'm saying. There you go. To the the young men out here, when I was single, when I was single, I visualized my wife. I used to fly on an airplane. People thought I was crazy. I would sit there and I I would close my eyes and I'd act like I'm holding my wife's hand. It it looked crazy. But I said, one day, I'm going to be flying across the country with my wife. And I've been doing that for the last year until she had our new baby. Amen. I said, one day, I'm going to speak around the country to thousands of people. And I was just a little police officer driving in a broke down patrol car with a dirty uniform. But I said, one day, I'm going to speak to thousands of people. Every time I would fly, I would imagine myself flying to a speaking engagement. Never once could I even imagine that it would be like this? But because I believed it, because I I believed it in my heart, because I pursued it with the right intentions, God allowed me to accomplish my dreams. And I want you to understand that dream isn't just for me. You guys have dreams, you have aspirations, you have goals. One of the reasons that you're here is because you're inspired to do something greater. And I want you to understand that that is afforded to you if you pursue it, you believe in it. Y'all agree with me? All right, amen. So I want to leave you with that. I'm going to open up for Q&A, and then we're going to close out the way we started. But we're going to do Q&A first. First question, rapid fire. I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. I only got five minutes. You so know they're wrong for giving me 20 minutes. So I can I talk s- for three hours. I have so many things I want to ask you, but the most powerful thing I think I could have asked you is, we didn't get to do it last year, but could you lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance? Because I can't think of a better person to do that. Oh yeah, okay. That's a go, that's a go. You want to do it now? All right, we'll face the flag. Y'all ready? Make sure you take your hat off, show some respect. All right, y'all ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's my man right there. Y'all need to give him VIP. All right, come on. I got four minutes. Hello, my name's Paul. My question is, how do we stop the left from using legal immigration as a way to gain 900,000 Democrat voters for every one million immigrants we take in each year? You said illegal or legal? Legal. Well, you know, we got to win the, the, the information war, right? 
People that come here, they come here for a better opportunity. A lot of them love this country. That's why they're here. That's why they've risked their lives in some cases and why they've put in and go through the process of asylum seeking or whatever the case may be to get over here because they love America. They know that we're free. But we have to be, you know, I guess seasoned enough to, to have the proper rhetoric to tell them when they get here so that they don't forget the reason why they came here and fled communism or whatever the case may be. We have to win the information war. We have to win the culture war. Those things, if we accomplish that, I think we'll have a better chance at getting more people who migrate here to vote for the right side. Now, I'll tell you, everybody's not a monolith. You're going to have people that migrate here that don't believe in conservative values, and that's fine. But I think we should be thinking about capturing the ones who do. And I think if we win the information war by doing things like we do all over social media, by electing people that are going to be in the office that represent the proper perspective, by putting up quality candidates, not fraudulent people who are in it for themselves, but putting up quality candidates, I think that those are steps in the right direction that we can attempt to win that battle. Thank you. Hey, Brandon. Hey. Um, so I see a lot of hate on the left uh, for police officers, but there's also a lot of frustration on the right feeling like police officers aren't protecting their rights and they're not standing up against when the left attacks the right. So how do you respond to conservatives who are really, really frustrated with the police um, because we fight for the blue? Right. No, I, I, great question. Great question. Um, you guys believe in we the people, right? You know, this country is run by us, not the government. We have a responsibility for our own personal protection. The police officers are secondary. We love them, we respect them, but they're secondary. If we call the police right now, they're going to show up after the fact, right? And so we have a level of personal responsibility to protect ourselves. So that should be the forefront of what we should be doing. If you get attacked or you go into a place like that, you need to protect yourself. I tell you what, in no way in the world, is Antifa or anybody like that going to come to Phoenix and going to do anything like I see them doing in Portland? It's going to be a bad day for them, right? I have the Second Amendment, and I, and I will protect myself. And nobody's going to block traffic and do all that stuff because I'm going to stand up. And so if we prioritize believing that we have the right to protect ourselves, not involving ourselves in situations that are, that are going to get us hurt, because some people go out and they want to protest Antifa and it's like, you're not accomplishing anything. You're just getting into a fight with people. You're outnumbered. You don't have weapons. You're not, you're not prepared. And you get your butt kicked. And you want the cops to intervene. Well, if you're going to go out there, you need to be able to protect yourself. Um, we should have faith in the police department. Understand that they are secondary in our, in our support and defense. They are. Um, in some cases, you, we use them to save our lives. But in most cases, you're going to have to be the front line of defense, all right, for yourself. And we should, we should maintain support for them and call them out when they're doing something that, that's illegitimate. So support the ones who are doing what's right, which is most police officers. We can call out agencies and jurisdictions that are, are putting us in poor positions when it's necessary. However, let's not use one or two situations, and I'm not saying you're doing this, because I know you, I know you, but let's not use one or two situations to cast a, a, a bad light over law enforcement in general. Doing good. Hi, Brandon. My name's Adam. Um, I'm going to be a freshman this year in the fall uh, college going into law enforcement. What advice do you have for me? Well, I'd say thank you for doing it. You, you, you are more brave than me because when I came into policing, it was fun to be a police officer. It was, it was exciting. Now it's a little more challenging. However, understand this one thing, that it's not a job, it's not a career, it's a calling on your life. And that should sustain you through all the turmoil, and it's going to get better. But thank you for starting. One thing you want to do, you're going to be in good shape, right? You got to work out. So when you go to the academy, you're not in the academy yet, right? You got to work out so you're elite in your physical fitness. So when you get to the academy, you're not worried about physical fitness. You're worried about the psychological part of it. Be a leader when you go to the academy. Lead the marches. Lead the runs, right? Lead the push-ups. Make sure you study. All of those things are invaluable for you to become a leader and emerge. That's what, that's what I did. Also, you can reach out to me, all right? If you need help, I, I, I did oral boards. I hired police officers. I did it all. So you can reach out to me. I'll, get you, I'll give you my information right now. And y'all don't be spamming me, all right? All you got to do is go to uh, connect at the Officer Tatum. Connect at the Officer Tatum. Contact me if you need any 
personal conversation with me about it, I'll help you. Um, another general thing that you want to do is make sure you do a ride along, if you haven't already. That is invaluable. And I'll say this to every single person that's, that's here. If you haven't done a ride along yet, you have missed out. If you love law enforcement and you want to you wanna understand law enforcement a little better, it's, it's better than watching cops, I'm telling you, or Police 360 or whatever the new show is. You go on and do a ride along. That's what inspired me to be a police officer. Officer Sean Payne, who's obviously in my book, um, he, he, I saw a hero in Sean Payne, and I became a police officer because of that. So doing a ride along, because when you go through the application process, they're going to ask you, what have you done to prepare? And by saying I, I work out, you know, I've done a ride along, and my whole life has prepared me to be in this position through all of the stuff that you've been through. That's the best way that you can go and prepare. But connect with me if you need more um, advice. Thank you. Y'all stand to your feet. I got to end it the right way. So all the things that I said, I want you to think about those things. You don't have to close your eyes this time. And we're not going to make it selfish this time. We're going to make it general. When I say in the end, you say we win, right? Because no matter what happened, oh, look, they locking arms right there. Y'all can, can, can get close to one another, touch and agree. When I say in the end, you say we win, all right? I want you to understand that when you say this out of your mouth, it will come true. Power of life and death is in your tongue. If you believe in the Bible, and if you don't believe in the Bible, you still believe in the atmosphere and energy and all that stuff. So you should understand that this, you put this out, it's going to come true. All right? In the end. Okay, okay, okay. I, I feel it. I feel it right up in here. In the end. In the end. In the end. Yeah, baby.